Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm actually, I'm in my closet. Um, it's kind of one of the only places I can find that's really quiet. Um, yes, but the Holy Spirit is really powerful right now and is really prompting me to share what God has showed me about the United States in the Bible. Um, and I know that the United States isn't actually mentioned in the Bible, but this is what the Holy Spirit showed me over the last month and I've been waiting for him to... I guess finish up, make sure there's nothing else he wants to add, and now he's really prompting me to get on it. So um, I'm going to start out in Revelation 3. Um, the Lord showed me, and I think I mentioned this in one other video, that the United States as a whole, the church in the United States, he's put them in the category of the church in Laodicea, or the lukewarm church in Revelation 3, 14 um, through 22. And... This is what it says. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold, cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Oh, look at me, fuzzies. Squirrel moment. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with the eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, the church in Laodicea, they're the lukewarm church. And the interesting part is their water supply was actually lukewarm. They didn't have a good water supply, so they had to bring in their water through these terracotta pipes from a long ways off, and when the water got there, it was lukewarm and kind of gross, um, sometimes contaminated, so they were very wealthy and they were very comfortable in their wealth, but they were missing the water, and the water for us is the Holy Spirit, that water that wells up in us eternally, um, and that's really what's missing in the majority of the churches in the United States. And I'm not talking about all the believers in the United States, um, but certainly a huge amount of them. And this is becoming more evident as believers are waking up. Those 10 virgins are waking up and the true believers are waking up and they're really, really hungry for the whole word of God. Um, I was at a family gathering tonight um, for my sister-in-law's birthday and they were talking about how watered down and just blah the spiritual food is at their church like Jesus isn't even mentioned it's like it's like a motivational speech that's what it's like and I'm hearing this from so many people um and it was like it like this for us at our church thankfully our pastor is um becoming aware of that and actually doing something about it um I think a lot of pastors have just been in this constant routine and they just need to snap out of it some of them won't um, but many of them will. They just need to wake up as well because they're just like us. They need to wake up just like we do. Um, so, yes. So that's where we're at. And the Lord is telling us to pay attention and change that, to change our clothes, to realize that we've been missing the Holy Spirit all this time and we've been missing the whole Word of God. And we need to get back to that. So really be reading your Bibles. Um, so the next thing that the Lord showed me was in Matthew um, 21, verse 43. So Matthew 21, verse 43. This is interesting. So this is right after the parable of the wicked vine dressers. And these vine dressers, um, there was a master and a landowner who planted a vineyard and he put a hedge around it and he hired these vine dressers to take care of things and they didn't. And so he sent his servants to collect his his share and they beat them. And then he sent some again and they beat them. And then he finally sent his son who is Jesus and they killed him. So this is what he says in verse 43. He says, therefore I say to you, he's speaking to the Jewish people, 
the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation, a nation bearing the fruits of it. That is the United States. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but whom, on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. And the stone is Jesus. The stone the builders rejected that has become the capstone is Jesus. Now, that does not mean that God is not going to fulfill his promise and renew his covenant with Israel. He will reveal himself. He, they will know that Jesus is the Messiah, and they will come back to him. So that's not what this is saying. But Jesus went to them first. He went to the Jews first and they rejected him. And because they rejected him, he said, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And the United States is responsible for spreading two thirds of the gospel around the world. Not in a fraction, not like only part of the gospel, but the gospel that has been preached, the majority of it has been from the United States of America. That is what God founded this country on. That is why he made us a nation. It's incredible. It's incredible. So I'm going to take you to let's go to second Peter. Is that where I want to go? I think that's where I want to go next. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Or is it Amos? I'm going to go to second Peter. Okay. Second Peter two. Here we are. Second Peter two, nine through 10. It says, but you, and this is, so when I read this, it was in my routine devotionals and the Holy Spirit said, this is the United States. And then when I went and read it back again, then I read it as it, it was written. Um, but the first time I read it, the Lord was really like this right here. This is the United States. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, like we didn't even exist. Our nation did not exist because we're made up of so many nations of the world, but are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy. There was no mercy from where our founding fathers and the pilgrims came from, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts, which can, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works. And I know he said to the Gentiles, so he is speaking to a Jewish audience, but the Holy Spirit was impressing on me that this was for the United States. So that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice. We are free, but we are peaceful. But as bondservants of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. We're supposed to live at peace with everyone as long as it's up to us, as long as we can. And that's what we need to do right now. God is still working. He's doing something big this week. I can feel it in my spirit. I don't know what it is. He hasn't revealed it to me, but my spirit is like all full of excitement and anticipation. Um, so I'm looking forward to what he does. So now we're going to go to Amos 5. And this is a word that the Lord is speaking to a lot of the corrupt politicians. Um, the corrupt leaders, the people that are involved in all the, the corruption in this country right now. Amos 5.10. I don't know how far we're going to go. We'll see. We're going to start Amos 5.10. It says, They hate the one who rebukes in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks uprightly. Therefore, because you tread down the poor and take grain taxes from him, 
That's what these politicians are doing. Though you have built houses of hewn stone, and they even spoke about this um, after the Twin Towers fall, fell, they quoted the scripture that says it was it was broken down and we will replace it with, with hewn stone. They were quoting that scripture, not realizing what it meant, that it was really a rebellious statement. Um, yet you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink wine from them. This is a warning from the Lord to all of those people. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins, afflicting the just and taking bribes, diverting the poor from justice at the gate. Therefore, the prudent keep silent at that time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that you may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you as you have spoken hate evil, love good, establish justice in the gate, it may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. And this is so cool right here because the Lord has also been impressing on me how much the United States right now is resembling the Israelites, which were the remnant of Joseph, fleeing from Pharaoh. We went through the initial let my people go during the Civil War. That was our let my people go moment. The spirit of Pharaoh followed the pilgrims to this country. It came over here, that spirit of Pharaoh that enslaved the Jewish people, that would not let the people go. It followed us here and it enslaved more people, black people, many, many people. And then there, there was the let my people go moment and the Confederates who are now the Democrats let the people go but not really. They still pursued them. Just like Pharaoh pursued the Israelites in the desert, they have been pursuing the slaves in this country and enslaving everyone in this country ever since then through different means, through very sneaky ways, through the welfare system, through the oppression of the people, keeping them down, making them feel like their vote is owned. When, when they say, if you, don't black for, if you don't black for me, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black, what they're saying is, I own you. That is an ownership statement. And they don't own us. They don't own any of us. And people are waking up to that and realizing, hey, they think they own us. That's what they think. And they've re-enslaved us. So now we're at the moment where Pharaoh has pursued us. And he and his army are about to get wiped out in the sea. We're going to walk through it, come out on the other side victorious, and they're going to get swept away. Um, so it's so cool that this ends with, it may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Because that's, yeah. Ah, it's just so cool. Um, yes. So that's what I have. So the United States is in the category of the lukewarm church as a whole, not everyone, not every church. There are churches that are alive and active. The faithful church exists here. The persecuted church exists here. The dead church exists here. All of those churches exist here, but the majority are part of the lukewarm church and God has had enough and it's time to wake up and stop being lukewarm. We need to be hot. I don't want to be cold. Let's be hot. Um, yes, and that corruption is being rooted out and you corrupt people take warning take warning because it's about to end for you so you need to repent now while you still have a chance god is long suffering that's the reason why these people are still here like sometimes i'm like why is nancy pelosi still alive why are any of these people still here as old as they are as old as george soros is why do they still exist like why and I was thinking about that, and it dawned on me that it's because God is merciful. He's long-suffering. He doesn't want anyone to perish, not even them. He wants all of them to come to repentance. He loves them, and he wants them to know him. And he's giving them every last opportunity for them to do that. But eventually, it's enough. He says, enough is enough. I can see your heart and you're permanently hardened like Pharaoh. And that's where a lot of them are ending up. So they have a scant short amount of time to repent and to change their ways and to come clean and to do what's right. 
And if they don't, it's going to be all over for them. That's it. And as for the church in this country, we all need to be woken up. Wake up. It's time to wake up and pay attention. Pay attention to what the Lord is doing. And this is not a end of the world statement. God has so much planned for this country. It's so incredibly exciting when he gives you that vision, when you're able to see what he's doing, when you realize that this death in America of this old system of all this corruption and what seems to be this country dying, A, is going to point to Jesus when he resurrects this country. It's going to point to him. It's going to be like the sign of Jonah. It's going to be like the sign of Joseph. It's going to be like that. Not that the, that the United States is this perfect, sinless country, but that it's going to point to Jesus what happens here. That's what's going to happen. And he is using the rooting out of corruption in the United States. It's already happening. It's already starting. All these governments that you see where these people are resigning, where people are being found out and they're resigning, God is rooting out the, the corruption in these countries. And that would not be happening if it weren't for what's happening in the United States. People know what's up and they are frightened. These corrupt people know what's up and they are frightened and they are fleeing and they are resigning and they are fessing up and they are changing their ways because they are afraid because they see it coming. They see the flood coming to take them away. That is what is happening. And as soon as the corruption is rooted out, we're going to have this time of mercy and grace where the gospel really is freely preached to the whole world, where that underground church, that persecuted church, finally has relief and can stand up and we'll see their persecutors come to know Jesus. It's going to be so amazing. That's why I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's, yes. So, anyways, um, read your Bible, start studying, and pray, and ask the Lord to reveal things to you, because he will show you things that you never knew were there. You could read a passage 500 times and miss the mysteries that the Holy Spirit has to reveal to you. So, pray and seek him, and he will show you. Um, one really cool thing, I was watching um, Darius Daniels from Change Church today, his sermon this morning. Check it out. It's really good. And he was talking about Zacchaeus and how Luke, I believe it was Luke, when he's writing about Zacchaeus, makes it a point to point out that he was short. He didn't have to do that. He could have just said he couldn't see, so he climbed a tree to see Jesus. But he pointed out that he was short. He was short and he needed a tree to see the king. And Jesus through the cross, through the tree, overcame his spiritual shortcomings. Isn't that a cool reflection there? Um, yeah, just so amazing, mind-blowing. So good service to check out. Um, yes, that connection is just amazing. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. That's how he explains the word of God to you when you're really seeking him and really pressing in and asking him to reveal things. He shows you those parallels and how everything points to Jesus. So I hope you guys have a good night and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.